7.52 p.m. We move to a notice of motion from Councillor Cordover on poker machines. Councillor Cordover is indicating he would like to move whilst we just wait for Councillor Westwood, who's declared a conflict of interest in this matter, to leave the room. Um, I will... She's now left, so I'll now ask for a seconder. Would anyone like to second the motion? Councillor Fox. Councillor Cordover. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to start with a question before I start my substantive, just to give some context. My question is to get a meaningful engagement on a, any matter of community interest, what would be a typical minimum number of days that a survey on our say should be open for community feedback? Ms Wilcox. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, it, a, a minimum of four weeks. Four to six weeks is our usual time frame for a survey. Thank you so much. I'll begin now. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, four to six weeks. Thank you so much for that answer. Tonight, I bring the Council's attention to the issue of electronic gaming machines, otherwise known as pokies or poker machines. Currently, Kingborough Council does not have a formal policy on uh, poker machines. Uh, and has no specific strategies to gain community consultation on the issue, and that's a quote from the officer's response to this report. This is exactly why I am proposing that we ask a few simple questions of our residents so that we can hear what they think about having additional poker machines in their neighbourhood. At some stage, perhaps sooner than we think, this council is going to have to require, uh, uh, is going to need a formal position on pokies because the sands of the gaming landscape in Tasmania are now shifting. For the first time in 50 years, the monopoly of legal gaming in this state may significantly change in 2023. So now, more than ever, this council needs to know what it will do if a venue in our municipality applies for more pokies, or for pokies. Whether we like it or not, we are a significant stakeholder, and I've taken the liberty of contacting the uh, Tasmanian uh, Commission for Liquor and Gaming, and they have said just that, and so too have gambling experts like Margie Law from Anglicare Social Action Research Centre and the Honourable Meg Webb, MLC. They have all said that the council, any local council, where somebody wants to have pokies in their venue is a significant stakeholder and there would be a community expectation that we would have an opinion on it. Uh, simply shrugging our shoulders and saying, we don't know, we don't have a policy on it yet, we haven't thought about it yet, it simply won't cut the mustard. And so this is why tonight I am proposing that we ask a few simple questions of our residents so we can hear what they think about the issue. So when a new venue applies to have poker machines at a venue in Kingborough, they will need to go through a community interest test. And as I said, I've spoken to the Tasmanian Liquor and Gaming Commission and they have told me in no uncertain terms that the community stakeholder feedback period is limited to 14 days. 14 days only. Now we've just heard that the minimum time to conduct a meaningful community consultation is four to six weeks. But I'm telling you that the T Tasmanian Liquor and Gaming Commission has said in no uncertain terms you get 14 days from the time that a venue places an advertisement in the newspaper. That could easily be the first time that this council would ever hear about it. And then we would have 14 days to draft questions to the community, circulate questions in a community engagement, collect and gather information about communities' attitudes to poker machines, draft a submission to the Gaming Commission, get it edited and checked and approved and then sent to key stakeholders for their feedback and then submit that submission for the community interest test within the prescribed time period. So, of course, my question to all of the councillors here tonight is do we think that 14 days, which is how long we will get, do we think that 14 days is a long enough time to do anything more than paying lip service to community attitudes on poker machines? So, of course, if you look at the officer's recommendation to this motion, it says that an engagement program in relation to community attitudes to poker machines may best be undertaken in response to a specific proposal rather than a general canvassing of views. And what I'm telling you tonight unequivocally is that if we wait until there is a specific proposal, then we will get 14 days to conduct that entire consultation. So it will not be a meaningful consultation, which is why I want and I propose tonight that we ask a few simple questions. Tonight, we embark on that process so that we are prepared. Now, why are we, why are the, this shifting sands happening in the, gaming, uh, in the gaming landscape in Tasmania right now? Well, it's because the Tasmanian government's future of gaming in Tasmania, future gaming market policy, proposes that the exclusivity arrangements under the deed with the federal group to conduct casino operations and operate electronic gaming machines in this state will end in 2023. 
And so the implementation of that change in the law, which is coming one way or the other, that may result in additional venues in Kingborough seeking to attain a licence to operate poker machines in hotels and clubs. Now, currently we have 50 poker machines in, in pubs and clubs, uh, 20 machines in one venue in Snug and 30 machines in another venue in Kingston. And a community interest test, which was introduced in 2016, will now be applied to all new applications to operate poker machines. So this is coming, whether we like it or not, whether we think it's relevant or not, we are a key community stakeholder and we will be asked by the community uh, what our position is. So when this law expires, new, uh, new venues will get involved. And we need to be ready. What is the council's official opinion on poker machines? We don't have one. What evidence would we use to create one if a community interest test for a Kingborough venue would happen tomorrow? We don't know what evidence we'd use. If a community interest test happens in Kingborough, we only have 14 days to do the research, ask the community questions, circulate those questions around, both to individuals and to members of local organisations, ask the community their feedback, compile that feedback, draft a submission, get it edited and checked for accuracy, and then approved by the general manager and the mayor, Time. shown to key stakeholders. I now request, uh, if you would indulge me under uh, item 22, section four of the procedures for an extra three minutes, just to finish up. I believe on, uh, someone needs to, ask, needs to move a motion. That you I move heard. that the speaker be heard for a further three minutes. That'll make it easier. It's very charitable. Second, there you go. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. No. Those against? No. I have a division. All those in favour of the motion to add an extra two minutes, three minutes? Three, three, three minutes. No. All those in, uh, we have a division, so all those in favour of the motion to add three minutes to, to Councillor Cordova's time, please raise your hand. Councillor Street, Reet, Fox, Cordover, Midgley, Winter. And those against is councillors. Those against, please raise your hand. Councillors Grace and Bastone. The motion is carried. Three minutes starting from now. Off we I go. I do appreciate it. Thank you. There is a very real possibility, Mayor, that the first time we get an inkling that a venue wants pokies in Kingborough will be an advertisement in the newspaper. And then we have 14 days to develop a policy and make a submission. Now, in the 96 days that pubs and clubs were forced to close their pokies, it's estimated that Kimber residents saved $618,000. The average electronic gaming machine takes in about $50,000 per year, so there are about 50,000 reasons why, when the laws change, that venues might investigate the possibility of getting pokies in their venue, and we need to know what our position is, and we need to know, to be frank, what the community's position is, because otherwise we'll just be uh, talking out of thin air when we do make our submission within those 14 days. Kingborough Council needs to canvas community views on poker machines right now so that the engagement mechanism, the engagement process is meaningful and not rushed. If this council chooses to wait until a specific proposal comes before us, as is suggested in the officer's response, then we will be knowingly choosing to provide less than 14 days for consultation. In that instance, I think that this council would be, rightly be criticised for not giving this issue the attention it deserves in line with the significant amount of community interest in the matter. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Gordover. Councillor Grace. I just think this is a totally waste of council's time. Absolutely waste of council's time and staff um, time also. Um, this is a government matter. The state government makes the decisions, not local government, thank goodness. And as far as 14 days, uh, you're concerned about councillor. What about the 14 days that the ratepayers are only given on a development application? That's, it. That's acceptable, is it? Um, I don't think so. But anyway, um, take for an example Snug, where I come from. When they didn't have poker machines at Snug. I don't know how many people got caught drink driving when um, the uh, drink driving was um, introduced and, and down to 0.5. This has got people off the road. They can go to their local venue, spend, have a meal and, and put 50 bucks or 100 bucks, whatever they want, through the pokies. Finished. Can I ask a question? Yes, you still can. Thanks. My question is, does our communications and engagement um, manager think that this kind of consultation would be limited to our say, or is 
can one envisage a, a, a broader engagement? Um, just to, I guess, answer Councillor Ross's point there. Ms Wilcox. Uh, through you, Mayor, it would um, ultimately, the decision on what the Council um, would like the engagement to achieve as to how we would arrange it, um, bearing in mind the um, resources that we have and the current engagement projects that we have on at the moment, which are quite numerous. Um, so yes, of course, we would always look at different ways for people to engage. We would never just engage online. Um, you know, we'd have to take in a traditional media and other forms so that everybody was able to participate in the project. Thanks. A further question. Is it conceivable that we could um, kind of have a softly, softly approach where we extend the consultation over a large period of time in order to fit in with council resourcing constraints? Is that a possibility? Um, Ms. Wilcox. Well, ultimately, that's a decision of council and my management. And my final question about that is, <laughs> is it um, are the questions that have been drafted here, which I might add were drafted by yours truly, are they are they able to be improved uh, with with a, a wise hand like the council um, staff? Through you, Mayor, all questions are probably able to be improved. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sort of advice I get nearly every day, so very good. <laughs> okay, there are no other lights. Uh, the question I was um, going to ask Ms Wilcox is how many consultations or um, projects are, are you currently doing and how many have you got planned going forward? Um, currently I'm managing eight engagement projects and seven, I think it's seven communication projects. Um, so as you're aware, the previous few council meetings, um, almost every second report had an engagement requirement attached to them. So at the moment we are quite busy with those, with those projects across the council. And so if the motion was um, was supported tonight, how would we resource this particular engagement? Uh, through you, Mayor, that would be something I would need to um, speak to the management team about. Um, Sound, thank you. Sounds as though um, it would be difficult to manage with existing resource, and I think that was in the, the comments, the officer's comments as well. <coughs> um, well, I've got, also got a question for Councillor Cordover, um, a legitimate question. The, uh, you've referenced the community interest test for pokies um, and that was announced back in 2016. I can find that announced. But has that actually been legislated or is that part of the um, new um, state laws? Was, was that in place already? Yes, so it's been legislated in, I believe, November of 2016. Okay. And interestingly, we signed, the Kingborough Council signed up to the community voices on pokies yes. reform before that community test was even invented. Yep. Um, and... Uh, how many of those community interest tests have taken place so far, if you know the answer? I understand I, if you don't. Yeah, I spoke to the Gaming Commission. It was originally designed with a particular venue in Glenorchy and Moona in mind, and for various reasons, both of those venues then um, withdrew their application. So as of today, the, nobody has yet fully gone through a community interest test. Okay. So since 2016, November 2016, uh, so almost three and a half years, there haven't been any... Uh, community interest tests actually done. Um, I'm also not aware, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there's a formal role for local government in that process. The only process it would have this would be as a respondent to the role, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. that there are, but there are key stakeholders, they're yeah. defined as a key stakeholder, yeah. but that's, that's not a statutory obligation for a council to participate, but they would be community expected to participate. Yeah, so... Um, it's existed since November 26, three and a half years. There hasn't actually been a community interest test undertaken because, um, as we know, pokies are actually um, declining in the uh, in interest. There's a lot of competition online, as referenced, and uh, there haven't been any new venues opened up during that time. Um, there's also not a statutory role for local government in this. So um, the statement that uh, or or a position that council would need to have a response, I don't think is correct. Um, when I think about pokies and the regulation of it, I think about our state politicians. We've all just seen a 2018 election that was dominated by pokies and the results. And so 
um, I think the community would expect their local government representatives to be making decisions about pokies, not their, uh, sorry, their state government, state parliamentarians to make um, their position known on this. Having said all of that, I don't like pokies either. Um, I've never liked them. Um, but that's not what we're debating. We're, we're debating whether or not we should go out and consult about it. I don't, think, don't see any, not aware of any proposal for a new pokies venue. I don't expect to see one. There hasn't been any in three and a half years. And so I don't see any urgency. We've heard from our communications advisor who says she's very busy, um, doesn't, unable to cut, properly resource it at the moment. And for that reason, um, uh, as much as I've learned a lot um, from Councillor Cordover's motion, I couldn't support it this evening. Councillor Cordover. Thank you, Mayor. This has been a robust debate and I thank councillors for indulging me with extra time. We've heard that a meaningful engagement and community consultation on any issue, but including pokies, a meaningful community consultation needs to take about four to six weeks, maybe 42 days. We've heard that when a Kingborough venue wants to have pokies in their premise, premises, this council will have only 14 days to respond because of that community interest test. So we know we need six weeks to have a meaningful engagement, four to six weeks. We know that we'll only have 14 days. We also know that the sands are shifting when it comes to gaming because of a change in this major legislation which will take place very soon. But we also know that a community interest test, even though it hasn't happened in three and a half years, it could happen at any time. But particularly because of the shifting sands of, of the gaming landscape, it is much more likely to happen now than ever before in 50 years. So we've heard that an in, a community interest test is coming whether we like it or not. And we've also heard that this motion isn't about saying whether or not pokies are right or wrong. It's actually about listening. It's about listening to the community to hear what they want so that when and if we need to do a submission, we actually have something meaningful to say that is evidence-based and data-driven rather than just coming off the tops of our heads. We've also heard from councillors about online gaming, alcohol and keno and drunk driving, all of which are irrelevant to a motion about running a consultation on pokies. But since it is of concern, I would welcome that proposal when it comes before us. We've heard that for the first time in 50 years, we actually need to be engaged with this issue so that we're ready, because we know that we won't just have to run a consultation. We'll have 14 days in total to draft questions, ask the community, collect and gather responses, draft a submission for the Gaming Commission, get it edited, checked and approved and circulated to key stakeholders and then submit it. But we have heard also from the Mayor that maybe we don't even have to do that at all. Maybe we can just say nothing, because of course it's not statutory legislation that says we have to say anything. We could just take no position on it. And the question then fundamentally becomes, what is the community expectation about an issue such as pokies, which is in the media all the time, what is the reputational risk to the council of not having an opinion when we are named up by the commission itself, by all of the gaming experts as a key stakeholder? What does it say to the community when you say nothing at all? So we've heard that we might accidentally give residents the wrong impression that we have somehow the power to overcome state legislation. And so, apparently, to avoid the risk of accidentally giving residents the wrong impression, councillors have indicated that they would in fact be happy to craft a submission to a community interest test within 14 days, knowing that it wouldn't really be that effective. Because you need 42 days, not 14. Point of order, Mayor. I'm, look, I'm reticent to interrupt, but I know that this is time for the restatement or for the winding up of the argument. I think he's, Councillor Cordova's introducing new information and probably also misrepresenting councillors at the same time. What part of the... Um, the misrepresentation is a point of order, um, but it, you'd have to clarify what part you, you felt councillors were misrepresented on, so I missed it. Uh, in relation to um, saying that councillors are apparently happy to uh, craft a submission and that we ah. would be happy with it not having any effect. Do you that? Yes. That's no, I don't. Um, I, th I think I agree with Councillor Street that, that that statement would misrepresent our position, yes. C can I rephrase that statement? That's a great idea. If we allow, so I will withdraw what I said and rephrase it to say that because we know that we only have 14 days to draft all these questions and put them in a submission, and we've also heard from our council staff tonight that we actually need four to six weeks. We know that mathematically there's a mismatch there, we, that we will need more time to run a meaningful engagement. What we can do is pay lip service to engaging. We can do that. There is plenty of time, time. to just... Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. The motion from Councillor Cordover is that 
the council staff would conduct an engagement to understand the Kingborough community's stance on poker machines. It was moved, not definitely wasn't moved by Council Street, I don't think. It was moved by Councillor Cordover and seconded by Councillor Fox. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. And those against? No. I have a division. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Reet, Fox, Cordover and Midgley. And those against is Councillor Grace, Street, Bastone, Wasson, Winter. The motion is lost. With some of mine grabbing the Deputy Mayor.